Good evening. I'd like to call to order this the regular town council meeting for Tuesday, February 11th, 2020. Tonight's opening prayer will be given by Reverend Dean Warburton. Please rise. Gracious God, we ask that you would watch over us and walk with us always. The world is plagued with many problems. Our nation, our society, and all societies face great challenges. I come fresh from watching TV this night and watching people being forcibly removed from their homes by public health authorities in China so that they can be quarantined forcibly. There is so much that rests upon the orderliness, the goodness, the preparedness of government and our leaders. And tonight we want to give special thanks to all those who work in the public health of this town, of this nation, to the caregivers in this town, medical caregivers, life caregivers who support life and who enable healing. We give you thanks for those friends and neighbors, those who live among us, who dedicate their lives to the health of our community. We ask now that your blessing God would rest upon the town council, the mayor, our police chief, first responders of our community, all those who work to enable orderly, peaceful communication and living together in our town. That's what it's all about, God. We know that. We know that you ask us to be peacemakers, to work together to achieve the common good. We thank you for placing all of us at the nexus of enabling that common good. All this we ask in your name, gracious God. Amen. I have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Thank you. Fishbine. Laffin. Here. Marone. Here. Morgenstein. Here. Shortell. What? What'd you say? Shortell. Oh, it didn't sound like you said Shortell. Here. It's just your name. I'm sorry. Tata. Here. Testa. Here. Sandry. Here. Chairman Cervoni. Here. Councillor Fishbein did advise me that uh, he is away this week. On to the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve or accept the consent agenda items A through L. Second. Moved, seconded by Councillor Shortell. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, item four, there are no items removed from the consent agenda. Uh, on to item five, can I have two motions on executive sessions for five and seven? Mr. Chairman, I move we go into executive session pursuant to Connecticut General Statute section 1-225F and section 1-206B regarding strategy and negotiations with respect to the matter of Vitanto and versus Town of Wallingford at all, and with respect to the matter of Town of Wallingford versus Neil Randall. At second. All. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, I declare the council in executive session. Please kindly clear the chambers. Thank you.
call the meeting back to order. Is there a motion to come out of executive session? I move we come out of executive session. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, I declare the council in public session. We need a motion on item six. Mr. Chairman, I move we authorize a settlement in the pending matter of Fitanto versus Town of Wallingford et al. as discussed in executive session. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion on the council? Councilor Zandri. Yeah, um, with respect to this, you know, I'm, I'm principally against the action I believe we're going to take up here, but based on the recommendations, I guess we're kind of bound to do it. I agree with your sentiment. I don't think we're bound, but I think this is an unfortunate business decision. So I share your sentiment. Any Thank other you. comments? Comments or questions from the public? Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Laffin? Yes. Marone? Yes. Morgenstein? Yes. Shortell? Thank you. Yes. Tata? Yes. Testa? Yes. Zandri? Yes. Chairman Cervoni? Yes. The motion passes. Yes, it does. On to item eight. I move we authorize action or authorized settlement in the pending matter of Town of Wallingford versus Neil Randall et al. as discussed in executive session. It's actually uh, authorized, authorizing the town to bid as discussed in executive okay. session. Sorry about that. Second. Amended, accepted. Second. Seconded as amended. Uh, any discussion on the council? There being none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. On to item nine, public question and answer period. There appear to be no takers. Item 10 is withdrawn. On to item 11, which is discussion and possible action regarding resuming Wallingford Energy Conservation Commission and uh, nominating those listed on the agenda. Councilor Morgenstein, this is your item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'm very excited to see this group back before us and some new people interested in joining in. Um, the Wallingford Energy Conservation Commission um, had been active for many years, saved um, money brought um, energy efficiencies to the town and um, expresses their mission as follows to find opportunities for Wallingford to improve the efficiency of energy and reduce costs for Wallingford and um, that certainly is for both residents and businesses and the town in general. Um, I am inviting the group up to please speak and give us some particulars and i um, very excited to um, hopefully see the council bring back this commission. Um, I think it really puts forward, um, as the plan of conservation and development says, um, actions that are useful. And here comes Ben Martin and I see others. Come on, Ben's not going to do this alone. <laughs> Yeah, come on, come on. Apparently I'm the only one who's not shy here. So. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Martin, you should, for the record, state your name and address, please. Uh, ben Martin, uh, 329 Ward Street, Wallingford. Mark Deptula, I'm a resident of Meriden, 34 Johnson Heights. So are you here in your capacity as uh, director of uh, facilities at the Board of Education? Yes, we have we have an interest, and uh, I, I worked with the committee uh, in the past, and um, it was good to get some feedback on some different items. Thank you. Um, so, I'll if you could, for the benefit of the recording, just move the mic closer. Thank you. Okay, is that working? Better. Um, so. The Wallingford Energy Conservation Commission was uh, started in 2008, um, and our initial project was to help these schools uh, uh, do an audit uh, with some funding from the federal government and uh, find ways to help them save money on energy um, using some low-cost methods of reorganizing how their energy systems were working. and. 
based on that audit, a, some improvements were made and it was estimated that the school would save $500,000 per year, every year after that um, those actions were taken. And that was in 2008, so it's a significant amount of money that was saved by the school system. Um, we furthermore worked um, later on to provide some demos of energy efficiency at the library uh, for people to take advantage of, such as audits of their homes and things like spin bikes that produce electricity and charge things and had representatives from Eversource and UI there to talk about their energy conservation efforts. And we also worked with Stop and Shop to have them install a electric car charger at their store to benefit their customers and reduce the use of gas for their customers. Um, so I really feel this is an important thing for the town to do because uh, every ounce of energy, whether it be a gallon of gas, a cubic foot of of uh, methane gas or a uh, kilowatt hour of electricity is money that we a lot of times don't have to spend because we haven't taken measures that would reduce the energy cost of our departments. Um, and we could save that money and either put it back into the department for things that have been on waiting lists and need to be done or basically return that money to the taxpayer in the, in the form of lower taxes because our departments are working more efficiently. So we are only going to see energy costs rise in the future, so it is best to take care of this as soon as possible um, so that we can not only get the advantages of the lower costs on current prices, but on the future prices. And as we all know that um, energy prices that are extracted from the ground are volatile and can't be predicted. Um, even if we make yearly deals for certain uh, types of fuel, then we have to renegotiate those at certain times and the prices will go up. So if we can reduce the amount of energy that we're using, then we end up saving everyone money and we also make the facilities more comfortable um, in the schools for students, in town buildings for the employees, and make it basically more pleasant um, place to work in. And is, I will say that behind me is several people who were volunteering to help, um, taking out of their free time to help the town reduce costs. And I'm sure that Mark isn't getting paid for this time up here. And so uh, we have him to interface with the schools. We have um, Alita who is, uh, works in the energy industry, is that correct? Uh, Pat Reynolds also uh, works with the schools. Uh, Jim is a former, or a current auditor, former auditor of Energy for Homes. And uh, Mary Mashinsky was another person that was volunteer and she can help us interface with the state government and take advantage of the programs that will, can bring these savings into Wallingford without with lowering or eliminating the cost to town government. So I really feel like this could be a benefit to the town and we can um, help the town out. So I hope that you will see clear to approve this. When's the last time uh, you were at all active? 2014, um, I think, I believe Gina provided a report up to uh, 2014 where we were active. Um, and we still had goals and things to do, but our former membership basically one by one either left town for some reason, passed away, or wasn't able to do any more work. And it came down to just Mary and I, and as we all know, Mary's very busy, and I'm very busy with a full-time job and other things to do. So we didn't feel it was something that a two-person uh, crew could handle, um, but I was approached by some people who had known about the committee and appreciate what it has done in the past, and they said they were interested, so we really feel like this is a very good time uh, because we have the people to do the research and the work in order to propose uh, things for the town to do. Mr. Chairman. Mayor. I just want to uh, correct one thing. There was an indication, I don't know if Eversource and 
UI, it's now Avangrid, were in town, but they have no jurisdiction in the town of Wallingford. As everyone knows, we have an electric division. The electric division has a program, the Conservation Load Management Program, which spends close to $1.5 million a year and has provided funds for schools and government buildings with regard to energy conservation issues. They do the audits, etc. So uh, we do have a very active program. Obviously, that's under the Public Utilities Commission. But UI and Avangrid would have no jurisdiction here and would not be able to spend any money here, to my knowledge. If I may respond. Um, uh, to that point, when I mentioned Eversource, it was as a gas retailer, which there are many people that use gas in this town, and they were presenting programs that people could save on gas at the library. Um, uh, the mayor is correct that you know we have a public utility here. Um, however, there are programs that are funded by Eversource and UI that e any state resident can take advantage of. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the council? Councilor Zandri. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, how are you doing, Ben? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, I just have a quick question for you because I'm, I'm just personally curious about it. My, and I, and I don't have the knowledge set that you and your team probably do. So my, my, I'm always interested in conservation for, for the aspects of, of the environment and, and for the impact of, of health and the well-being of people. That's my. Fine. And my, my and I'm the guy that drives the electric car. Remember, right? So, but my my concern with um, conservation on the opposite end of it is the fact that what what does it do, or does it? Maybe it doesn't do. Does it do anything to destabilize the price of of the utility costs? And what I mean by that is, poles cost what poles cost, wires cost what wires cost. The service has to be delivered. There's an expense to that. And if if you suddenly conserve and, and we use half as much, kind of like the taxes, you know, taxes in a town. If we suddenly used half as much electricity and thereby shim the profit from the electric division, or if it was water, the water division, what does that do to the unit cost? Is there any real correlation or is it so small that it doesn't make a shift? Um, we are not at the point in the energy system across the state right now where that would, that would make a discernible difference. Um, as in, in Wallingford, we're lucky to have a public utility here, which only job is to serve the public. They don't have to make a profit. So if it, we were to come to a point that all Walling, uh, the dream scenario that all Wallingford residents were net zero energy and not buying any electricity from the, from the uh, public utilities, um, they have in the past increased their service charges to make up that money. Um, so if you want to be connected to the grid, then the service charge pays for that maintenance and the, and the upgrades and maintenance of, of the lines and such, as you mentioned. Um, also, um, I believe that, and I, I can be corrected here, I believe that the town owns the like poles and lines of, of that we have, so I believe it would come under their jurisdiction to maintain them. Yeah, so that was, that was I'm glad you brought up like the, the flat connection fee, because that was part of where my question was coming from. I, I, I know that the connection fee has doubled over the past nine years for electric. So that's, that's one concern of mine, because you could ultimately have service to your house and spend $15 and not draw a single watt of power. Um, and, and while I don't know that we're there yet, you might end up having a situation where they may require that, whether it's our town or any utility system. Right. In other words, in order to have a certificate of occupancy, even if you're zero, you, you're re if the requirement to be in the, in the dwelling is to be connected to the city services. I know that out west, there's some talk about that, because especially like in Arizona, where they've got a lot of opportunity to pull solar because of the concentration and the focus, They've actually had a problem in some of those communities out there. Now, they're very rural, very small, but just like us, they're power-producing communities. And because so many people were disconnecting, it was driving up on the prices of the people that couldn't afford those types of systems. So they mandated that everybody must be connected. So that was why I asked the question. I don't know that we're at that point, or, or do you feel like we could get there, or what are your thoughts about that? Well, first of all, 
you're right, we're not at that point, and the reports in the West about that, I, I, this is kind of beyond the Conservation Commission, but were wildly overblown by the utilities because their profit model was being threatened um, by people who were not paying them for the power they used to pay them for. Um, so, and I would also say that um, it was pointed out to me, we were having a talk in the hallway, that a solar system in Hartford has recently got a contract with Rhode Island to buy the solar power at 5.7 cents from Hartford for the next 20 years or some number to that effect. And in what, what I see in that model is if, like, we get to the dream scenario that everyone is producing their own power in Wallingford and the utility has to buy it, our utility can send, then sell that power to make money back to main, maintain the lines and such like that. So it's, it's, a, it's a kind of reversing or, or turning on its head of the model that we currently have where there's a central power station that's sending out power to everybody. It's a distributive model where if people are producing their own power, most people that do that right now don't use all of it. it. It goes back into the grid for other people to use. And you talked about other customers, and I will say for myself that I would much rather buy power from my neighbor than I would buy power from the, the, a gas burning plant in Canada uh, that's coming over lines over a thousand miles. I, I call it like, you know, local power, or artisan power, because we're, uh, we're basically helping our neighbors out by buying power from them. But it becomes a distributed model where there's thousands of points producing power going into the grid, and then the job of the public utility is to make sure that power gets where it's needed and sell off what we're not using to basically meet the needs of maintenance and stuff like that. All right. Um, thank, you, thank you for entertaining my questions. And I, I probably should preface that I asked them just out of general curiosity, not something that I felt like was the charge of the commission. I just figure you guys... Yes, I will say that is not the charge. Yeah, the no, no, no. And I, Because I, I was it's just part of the discussion of, of conservation, and I'm thinking, well, have, have we looked at some of the broader pieces? And it sounds like you guys at least have investigated it. Yes. So, so I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Shortell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, just a procedural question, I guess. So the committee was dormant, or is dormant, and we're being asked to reinstitute it tonight. So, and then we're also being asked to appoint specific people to it tonight. So typically, when the council appoints people to a committee, they either come through the, the Republican town committee and the Democrat town committee have, you know, people they put forward or, if I, if I, if I or may. let me finish, or for um, public celebrations, we all got, or charter revision, we all appointed somebody. So I guess I'm not, whether I'm for this or not is kind of separate, but I feel like I'm not sure I'm going to vote, I, I'm not sure I'd vote for, a, you know, to appoint people to a committee that one counselor or any counselor brought on one night. I'd want to open it up to the town, and I, I'm guessing there's not hundreds of people beating down your door. I mean, you, you said it yourself when you first opened your comments. You were carrying the torch for a long time by yourself. You have some passionate people that I recognize in the audience. But just from a philosophical perspective, I, I, I still feel as though there should be some kind of, if this were to go forward, some kind of process where every counselor could kind of come forward or the two town committees could come forward. I don't, I don't know. Am I off on that or am I? If, I don't think you are, but... Um, Mr. Martin seems to feel strongly about something he's about to say. Sure. I, I just want to stipulate that it is not a committee, it's a commission. And there okay. are different stipulations based on the commission. It's an all-volunteer commission. Um, and it's open to anyone who wants to serve on it. So if these people are approved tonight and the Republican town committee comes out and says, we'd like these three people to be on, that would be fine with me. Uh, I assume that's fine with everyone. So is this a Democrat? This is a formal Democrat town no, committee? No, it is not. It is, oh. a, it is a nonpartisan commission, advisory commission, to advise town personnel on projects that will save them energy. Um, okay. I would st still be hesitant to approve anything 
till we, whether it's a commission or a committee, a memo or a mission statement, I'd rather wait till, but whatever, that's, that's for down the road. I guess um, my only other question then would be taking a step back then. So you don't think that what you could accomplish could be accomplished through the existing Public Utilities Commission? Um, I would say that the Public Utilities Commission is very busy with administering the water and, and the power for the, for the town. And they have, they have um, very, a lot of challenges in day-to-day -day administration and running it. And what we, what we are proposing that we do is we provide a little bit of volunteer labor to propose to them ways to save energy not just the Public Utilities Commission, uh, maybe Parks and Rec, maybe, you know, maybe the, uh, uh, maybe the Animal Control, maybe whatever department decides that, like, you know, if we come to them with a project and we say, just for instance, we've, we've, done, the, we've done the research and found that if we install solar panels on the gazebo in the community lake park, it will produce this much power and save you this much money every year. Parks and Rec, would you like to take advantage of that? So, um, and then you know we would help them through the process of of you know going through the permitting for that, getting the approval from the town council and the mayor and whoever else needs to approve it. Um, and we would just help them out and stuff like that. So it's really just advisory and a, a way to provide a little help to these people who are busy doing their day-to-day -day operations and not looking at ways to improve their energy infrastructure. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mayor? Yeah, I, you know, and I, and I understand the, the desire to help, but it's not that the commission our utility is not actively involved in this. As I stated, it's about a million, million five every year that is collected through rates that must be spent on conservation load management projects. And I think in 2018, it was almost 1.7 million. And I think last year it was 1.3. But anyway, there's an active program. It's not like it's it's a program that is just left for when someone has spare time. We, we have a paid person who oversees this program and is very active in going out to industry. Home audits are done, and I believe your activity with home audits was also conducted through the company that at that time it was CMEC had hired a company to do um, the auditing with, with our electric division as the key player in that in determining how the money was spent and what was done. So it's it's not it's not nothing that is after every every other work, after all other work is performed. This is a daily exercise because we're obligated to be spending that money which is correct collected in rates. We're ob obligated to be spending that in uh, conservation load management matters. So it just Thank you, Councillor Marone. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So, I guess my concern, I echo some of Councillor Shortell's concerns about how the, the committee was formed, but to set that aside, I guess I'm not sure what it is that us blessing this is going to do for you that you couldn't do on your own. It just seems like you're a group of concerned citizens that wants to talk about energy conservation and you have access to the town departments already. So I'm not sure what this would enable you to do that you couldn't do before. Um, I think it would give us a sort of, I guess, it, it would give us a, the re a reason for the town departments to, to um, I guess I, I would say it's a foot in the door for the town departments because, you know, yes, anyone can go talk to a town department, but um, they can say, well, I'm busy with my day-to-day -day stuff and I don't have time to meet with you. Can you come back in three months or whatever, whatever it may be. And it provides a thing, oh, you're working with the town. Well, then, okay, I'll fit you in next week. Um, and, it's, and I think it also sends a good mission, it sets a good mission message that our town is concerned about those things. Um, and we 
we take this seriously. And as the mayor said, the conservation and load management is done by the PUC. But that is slightly different than what we're talking about. We're talking about building improvements that would help that. And in following the conservation and load management program, that is mostly for businesses and large customers that, that use a lot of energy um, in the millions and millions of kilowatt hours. And we're talking about, you know, conserving energy in the, in the lower users that are far down the list from conserva conservation load management. So in answer to your question, I, I think it would just, it would give us a little bit more legitimacy than just some guy off the street. And it provides a good message that the town is concerned about these things and that, you know, it is open to improvements and saving money for the taxpayer that, um, they, that they would want to lower their energy use and, and save money. I guess I'm having a hard time visualizing what it is that we would do. Like, I understand power conservation. Obviously, it's very important, right? Make my kids turn off the lights and those kinds of things. But um, how would you, what kind of building projects would we engage in to save money? I understand the solar aspect, but the solar is a little bit controversial because of the, the upfront costs and so on. So I guess I'm just trying to visualize what it is that we would do to get us there. Well, um, as we saw in the school project, and I don't know if you want to talk about this mark at all or not. You know, currently we're on the verge of completing a uh, energy audit that covers all things except for lighting. The electric division has already completed their audit. Um, so uh, in the past, when I first got involved in this commission, I, I think I was just a guest. I don't think I was a member. Um, so I provided some technical insight and I conveyed what my plans were for some projects. Um, and it was good to have that support system there. You know, um, we move forward with uh, projects that in the past we may not have been able to do. Um, one was uh, to replace the boilers at Moses White Beach with the most efficient boilers available on the market. That required removing the oil tank and going to single fuel. If we didn't do that, we would have not been able to get uh, to that standard. We would have had much less efficient boilers in that building. So um, I conveyed those plans to the committee and the commission and uh, they were responsive and then we conveyed those plans to the town council and you guys supported us in that. Um, I think that was a, a, a wise move. I can't tell you exactly the dollar amount um, that was saved but um, I could probably get some of that information from the business office uh, but it's a, it's a this is a group effort. It's a community thing um, and I, I don't know that the role, I, I'm not familiar with the role of every part of this commission in the past, um, but it should be looked at as a, a community group, somebody that's uh, you know interested in advising our departments on what possibilities there are out there. I know every department head works very hard at uh, understanding their business and um, knowing where to make those changes that can save money. But when you look at something like a public school system at well over a million square foot a building, there's always opportunities. Um, I can do the best possible job that I know how to do, and there still will be opportunities to save uh, energy dollars. Um, as long as I've worked for the town, I started in 1996 and have been gainfully employed for that entire time, um, I've completed energy projects, some as simple as upgrading flushometers so uh, as we're using a gallon and a half as opposed to three and a half gallons you know it, it, minor things um, but all this adds up over time um, there's ways of tracking some of this but we've always taken action to save money um, we spent less time tracking it um, every time we've had to we've had to replace the hot water system um, I've made a reduction in the size of that system um, so we've gone in some cases from 800 to 1,000 gallon storage tank to a device that's storing 100 gallons of, store, of, of water. Uh, that's a phenomenal savings for the town, over, especially over time, um, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, it's good to have someone looking over our shoulder. Um, I, I take that well. Um, uh, criticism is fine with me. 
Um, and if somebody can offer some assistance in what I'm planning, uh, that's great too. So there's opportunities here. Thanks, Mark. And I remember um, my first couple of years on the Board of Ed, you were going through the next gen energy conservation project with the lights. And I know that did yield a ton of savings. So I think in theory, I'm fully supportive of this. I guess I think I want to know a little bit more about the members and you know and so on and so forth before I say yes. Um, so just to respond to your question about sure. what kind of things it would do that like if I remember from the audits of buildings that we have on file here, um, you talk about switching off lights, it's much better to put in a motion sensor so that like you don't have to switch off the light. It turns off by itself. There was a building where there was a garage door that was never used and it would be much more energy efficient to replace that with a wall um, because the, the garage door was letting air out. Um, same with windows and same with leaky roofs. Um, one project that we found would save energy but was too expensive to do um, was moving air conditioners placement on the roof um, because it would like, it uses less if it uses less energy if it's in direct, if it's in a shaded spot rather than in direct sunlight. So it's things to that nature that people, you know, yeah, turning off lights is great and replacing light bulbs, but it's looking at the buildings holistically and saying, here's where you're losing energy and here's how to fix it. Hey, Mayor. Hey, can, can I ask, was it the audit that was done by the town's um, consultant, was that what you were reviewing as far as what could happen and what not? Because that's, that's the purpose of an audit. They go in and they determine you know, what, what can be altered, replaced, changed, etc. So was that the commission or that, was that the audit? That was the audit. The, the electric division um, paid for an audit on the, and they looked at all the parking lot lighting, all the building interior lighting. So um, that information we have now. And uh, we're incorporating that into the Board of Education audit, which goes into all the HVAC, rotational loads, everything other than lighting. And um, that's, we're set to award that bid for our Board of Ed audit this week. Um, once that happens, they will combine the two and we will have some guidance uh, for future energy projects. Um, and I, I think that'll be, um, That'll, that'll be a, an accomplishment. Um, so in, in terms of answering, I thought what some of the questions are, it, you're saying other people to look at it, but it's basically the audits are being performed by a professional consultant, and that, that has to be approved by the electric division for payment. Um, it's, I'm not sure what the commission is bringing to the table is anything new with regard to that. Well, I, I, in answer to your question, I would say that um, there is a audit of Wallingford Public Buildings that did an audit, was paid for by the Electric Division um, in February 2012. And as far as I know, none of the actions taken in this audit were done. So, or, or identified in the audit were done. So the role of the commission would be to, you know, put together a presentation saying, here's the things you can do. Uh, this, here's the data that says you can do it and how much you will save and then get either the department or the town council to approve projects that would do that. Um, you, you mentioned that the conservation load management program only provided um, audits to, uh, to commercial entities in town. I said mostly. Mostly. I, I want to say it's 10 or 11 years ago after we'd been in our house for a bit, we had an audit done. Uh, that, yes, and, and that was provided by the P, by the electric company right. um, or or subsidized because there was a point where that was it was seventy five dollars or something to do that and there was a point that it was free um, and that was basically something that CMEC um, a program that CMEC said basically I believe it was through legislation that said they had to provide that and as the mayor said the public utility collects money that they have to provide for that program. Right, that, Mayor, that was the legislation, wasn't it, that, that we had to collect fees to... Uh... Well, it's part, part of the rate structure, right. and CMEC was doing that for us using our funds. Yes. So it was all of the funds that came from Wallingford, and they were, they were handling that, 
in, uh, hiring a consultant to do it, but we were the ones paying the bills basically, or CMEC was with our money. Uh, but in terms of who who received a service in 2019, uh, residential uh, home energy savings uh, lighting. It was a total on residential of six hundred and six thousand dollars, and a total of on commercial industrial the larger. It was nine hundred and ninety five thousand for a one point six million dollar total. No, I, no, I, I'm sorry. Those were the, it's one point two million dollar total. It was five five hundred and fifty eight thousand on residential, six hundred and forty three thousand on commercial industrial for a total of one point two million nineteen and similar figures but higher in uh, in two thousand eighteen. I mean, it's a very active program and the audits have to be done by professionals um, for a lot of good reasons because they know. Uh, how to actually look at space, analyze it, estimate costs, etc. So uh, it, it's not just commercial, industrial, residential. Obviously, is is absorbing quite a bit of the the money and the advantage. Thank you, Councillor Testa. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. I would thank uh, Councillor Morgenstein for. Putting this together for us, um, you know, I, it's very easy to ask the question: Why do we need this group? Um, why do we need anything? People want to contribute. Um, it's a very easy to say. Well, what's the difference? Any group of citizens can get together and talk about things and bring things to us. Um, but there's a certain degree of um, Credibility that's attached to something when it's sanctioned, if you will, by the community, by the town. Um, they're also they're able to spend their time doing many things that other um, organizations or departments or, or personnel uh, may not have as much time to do. Um, discussing what they do, what they can do, what they may do, um, shouldn't be seen as an affront to other people. Or some way of saying that other departments or other people maybe aren't doing their job well enough. I don't think that's the point here, but it's very easy sometimes to get defensive, and we should back up a little bit. Um, not everything is presented the best way sometimes, and it may be taken the wrong way. <clears throat> I also think it, it, it's a nice opportunity for uh, people in the, in the general community that might want to ask questions or, or make suggestions. You see it all the time on on social media. People are always saying, where do I go to do this? Who do I talk to? Blah, blah, blah. Um, it's just like we have a coalition that's not a part of the town, but a better Wallingford. There's ways you can say you should talk to these folks, you should talk to these folks. So there could be a whole bunch of people in town that may have ideas, things they want to discuss, and they can get involved, they can get in touch with the, the commission here and um, and in their work, I'm assuming periodically we're going to hear from them. They're going to have suggestions for us. They're going to have things they want to talk about. And frankly, none of it has to be done. Um, but it's a good idea to get a lot of people with the energy, the intellect, the, uh, the, the proper motivation together to perhaps um, offer suggestions that can improve uh, the situation regarding energy conservation, which I don't think anybody is going to argue is not a good thing. Um, as far as the composition of it, now obviously, it's one of those things where I'm going to start a club, let me call the people I know closest to me and get their names there. Um, we've seen a few times where uh, one or two counselors may have been proposing people for something and others have said, hey, how come I didn't have a say in this? Well, the, the nice thing about this is it's not a it's not a formal by charter commission with a limited number of people available. If other people want to serve uh, that other town, that other councillors would like to put forward, um, I think we would only gain by adding numbers to this group of people. Um, but it's just one of those things where I, I just think to myself, why not? 
there's no real legitimate reason to say no to this. Um, and there are, and I think we're focusing also too much on the crossover with roles that the Public Utilities Commission and the Electric Division have. I see this group as uh, being able to look in other areas other than the day-to-day -day operation of a utility and bringing uh, ideas on technologies and other types of things to the table. I would fully expect that they would be having conversations and making presentations to the PUC, not only to us. Um, and again, I don't see there's, there could be any harm. I think we only gain by this. And it's a way of saying to the community, we welcome community involvement. We care about the issues that these folks want to talk about. And, uh, and let's see where it takes us. Thank you. Councilor Lavin. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna, I have a couple questions and um, I'll get loop it all back around and hopefully pull it together. Um, I'm, kind of, I'm coming from where Councilor Shortell and, and Councilor uh, Marone are and um, I'm, I don't think I, can, I would vote on an action tonight. I want to kind of understand more w what we're doing because I'm not seeing this or hearing this as a continuation as much as this is like a reboot, right? Um, so uh, like the auditor, so yeah, I had questions and, and the mayor's questions kind of got back to the auditor's thing. So that was more from, from the PUC. So what is, what, what have you met with the PUC or what was your relationship in the last iteration of this with the PUC versus, have you talked to them now about um, starting this or? No, I, ha I haven't talked to, well, we haven't talked to the PUC. Um, as I said, um, we, Worked with them. They provided us some data on the power use of the different departments yeah. and different buildings. Um, they have been generous in providing us data that we asked for um, to kind of look at where the biggest energy users were and if they could be uh, made more efficient sure. and lower energy use. Um, there's no there's no official relationship. Um, they we present to them like we present to any other town department. Okay. And then when, when you would rec like you use the example of recommend, recommending and advising the, the park and rec department with gazebo with the solar panel thing. Yeah. So if they said no, then what? Like that's it, it's over or like what? So in the old committee, what would have happened? Well, there were, like I said, there were things that we recommended that were not actions that were not taken. We are uh, really only advisory okay. um, in that, you know, like, there, there's no part of the original, um, the original passage of the committee or the commission that says if this commission recommends you do this, you have to take these actions. Okay. We are advisory and we work with them. Um, like we worked with the schools, we said, you know, um, we we would like to we like to work with you. So um, Mike Brodinsky was on the commission at the time, and he worked with the PUC to get them some money for the audit. And um, after the audit was done and we presented to them that they could save a lot of money by, for instance, marrying all their, marrying all their software energy systems together into one versus having separate systems. That way it could be controlled and um, used in a central place that would take efficiency of all the buildings into account versus have a bunch of people working on different systems that said like, well, this school is set at 85 degrees and this school is set at 65 degrees. Um, so it was bringing the proposal from one system. And you know, we went to the school board and they approved the project to, um, to do these changes and the changes were done and um, the superintendents thanked, thanked us for our help. Um, and I believe for that project was the one that we got an award from the state for yeah, I saw. several several commissions and committees and task forces like this exist in lots of other towns. Yeah, um, I found over 15 um, when I just did a Google search earlier, and I know there's more than that. Um, so it's really just advisory in that we go to these, and if they um, if they decide they want to do it, then we move forward. If not, we'll maybe rework the proposal if if they have some feedback and bring it back to them if they want to do that. But in the end, it's up to the department to decide whether they want to take action or not. Okay, and, and, and that ties perfectly to, to where I want to kind of wrap it up. Or 
Um, and you mentioned when the committee or the commission formed. So were you given a charge, like did the council, like when we formed the Charter Revision Commission, we had a whole meeting where we came up with a charge and we we're like, here. And I, and I looked through the, the notes and it, it mentioned something about the mayor's policy. And that was the that was the most I found as far as a charge or a guideline goes. But did the council hand you like, a, okay, we're going to form the commission and this is your role, these are your responsibilities, and this is how you'll interact with the town? Did they hand you anything like that? Um, I don't remember since it was, um, you know, 12 years ago. Um, if there was a specific wording or if I included that in any of the documents. Um, but the basic charge was, like I said, to, um, to do research and, do, and make proposals um, to town departments on ways to save energy. Um, that was in basic what it was. There wasn't a, a, this commission will last for two years and produce this result. It was find us ways to, find, find the town ways to save energy. It's kind energy. of a simple, yeah. yeah. Okay. So go, if we're going forward with this, I think I'd like to do some sort of get together, talk about charge, like give them some sort of structure. Otherwise, I mean, well, we have the Conservation Commission. They do land, right? Right. That's different. And they're, they're not nine people either. They're, they're a smaller group, I think. Um, but I, I, I feel like if, if we're going to do this, reboot this thing, and, and we don't have a charge, I don't want it to come across as just like, some people that got together and they're like you're a watch group or a lobby group like if it's going to come from the town i feel like we should get together and figure out some sort of official capacity like with an official statement so that it's not just you wandering in and then being like oh this, these guys are here they got together in somebody's garage like somebody from the count like the council is sending you out do you know what i mean i, I understand what you mean I, I will say that um when we were active um it was there was a, um, a requirement that we meet monthly and produce minutes and file them with the town. Okay. Um, and um, we did that, and we used to meet in this building, uh, usually downstairs. Um, and so there were requirements that we file minutes, and if we were going to cancel a meeting, we had to file a cancellation and things like that. So I... So you were held to like a structure. Yes, and so I, I assume I assume if you if we go back and look at the minutes for that meeting, then that structure would be there. Okay. Yeah. So then, like, uh, yeah, then I'd like to kind of pull that and and take a look. And even you know, and I didn't go back, but maybe we go back to the original council meeting that the chairman at the time, I guess Brodinsky, um, kind of put this together and pull and pull some of that information. So that that's that's most of it. Um, yeah, so I, I think I'm, I'm good if I, I just had those kind of outstanding questions or my recommendation to the council going forward, what we, how we handle it. Thank you, Councilor Tata. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, and thank you to all of you for your willingness to help out. Um, Mr. Deptula, you had said that the, the schools are currently undergoing an audit. That's through the PUC, or who, who's handling that? Um, that energy audit is through the Board of Education. Um, the um, electric division did their lighting audit, so um, that's complete now. But we didn't want to stop there. Um, there, there are a lot of energy use uses in the building that you know need to be evaluated. Um, some of the standards have changed, even since the 2007 renovations. A lot of the uh, air quality standards and the way that's controlled has changed. So there's all kinds of opportunities to upgrade things. Um, we, we, we did a lighting project in the near past, um, Ben had uh, alluded to that earlier, um, and that was a very successful project, automated switching, new lights, but at the time we upgraded to T8. Uh, T8 lights at the time were the best thing we could get. We researched um, LED retros, retro kits, um, and all kinds of installations, and found that there were a lot of safety issues with those items at the time. As a matter of fact, one of the major producers actually pulled the product from the market. So it was the wise decision at the time to update the T8s, but within a couple of years, we were already behind the times. Um, there's a substantial amount of money to be saved by upgrading all lighting to LEDs. I think everyone knows that. It's well, well documented uh, from street lights all the way to uh, 
you know, uh, labs and small rooms like that. Um, so uh, that, that's all a positive thing. And at the end of this audit, we will have a clear picture of what things we should move forward to. Because there's, there's a million energy conservation ideas. Uh, most of them are not good. Um, and, um, you know, to have some advice or support from a committee or anyone, uh, that's, a, that's a positive thing in my position. Uh, you know, we are, we are trying to do things um, as conservatively as we can. The goal is always to save some money, uh, even if it's minor. But um, that's, that's really, uh, I can't wait to see that roadmap because I know there's going to be some things that are very low-hanging fruit, easily done. It'll be easy to show that there's a savings, but there's also some outlying things that we could be doing that um, you may not have much of a savings. Um, it may be the right thing to do, but we may not be able to do it. Um, I've... I've Got millions of ideas, but I know not all of them will ever come to fruition. Okay, so the the lighting, the part that the that the electric Wallingford Electric was involved in that they did the lighting audit. Yes. And then the other part, the board had hired an outside auditor to complete. That's correct. Okay. Uh, thank you. The I guess also not so much a question, more of a comment to the council. I'm to Councillor Shortell's point. I'm I'm reluctant to do anything on this tonight because I'm not sure that the way that this is being formed is is the proper way to go about it. Um, I was a little surprised to see one agenda item where we had a creation of it and the names, and I'm I'm not so sure that there's not there wouldn't be residency requirements. I I don't know that I don't think everybody lives in town. Um, minority representation. So I want to make sure that if this were to go forward, that we have all of that um, down before we we did anything. But also on that, does anyone know when this was originally formed? Yeah, it was two thousand eight. It was a town council. Yes. So the town council created the com the commission. Correct. And then appointed the members. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, um, Councilor Morgenstein. Yes, thank you. I appreciate um, the chance to circle back around. So, um, you know, really what was asked for tonight was let's reform a very useful commission. The Wallingford Energy Conservation Commission existed, was formulated by a prior town council. Um, I would see an opportunity tonight to say let's reform the Wallingford Energy Conservation Commission. Let's make a statement as a council that we are interested in energy conservation. The, um, what was brought to me did have a list of names because this group of people, there may have been one or two other names on that list, um, said, wow, that had existed, and look at what a good thing it did, and I would really like to be part of that. Um, so I'd hate to get stuck on how are we going to do it. I, I would really like to see this council say tonight, we feel invested in the importance of reactivating something that only stopped existing because circumstances changed and there were not people acting in it, um, reinvigorating a Wallingford Energy Conservation Commission um, happening. Um, here are people with lots of expertise willing to give of their time and saying, bring on as many people to help us as you can. Bring us a list. These just happen to be the people that, for whatever brought them together, have said, I will do this. Um, Pat Reynolds, a member of the Board of Ed, has offered to be a liaison between the Board of Ed and this commission. Um, I certainly would be happy to be the council representative. Our plan of conservation and development said there, there are various things that should be um, getting looked at and performed and done, and this sort of body would help to do that. Um, I know personally when I 
was first on the council. I looked at um, various programs that help um, towns to perform certain duties. There's a million grants out there. There are programs. There, there's money. There's, there's people that come in and teach you how to do things. These people have access to that and the time to give us that. Um, so uh, my ask is, could we at least tonight say, we, the town council, would like to reform the Wallingford Energy Conservation Commission and how the details of who is on that happen. Um, I would like to see these people, um, if a person being from Meriden is not possible, I'm sure he'd still come and meet with them and give his expertise and is going to be working with the Board of Education. Um, I don't think you have any limitation to your numbers. It sounds to me like you would be happy to meet in room 315 rather than the to whatever number that small room is, the more the better, bring it on. Um, again, the, the names on that sheet are simply the names of people who have um, sent emails back and forth and talked and, and proposed being on this. But um, I'm asking, could we please um, reform the Wallingford Ener Energy Conservation Commission? Is that your motion? That's my motion. If I may. I'll, I'll, I'll Seconded just, by Councillor Testa. I'll just say that our meetings have always been open to the public and anyone is welcome to show up to them. So, and the membership changed out over time. We had members come in and leave and out. So anyone is welcome to serve and help out. If you're a town commission, your meetings really should be public. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yep. um, Councillor Marone. Uh, thank you. So just a couple of quick things. So to respond to uh, Councillor Testa's question of why not, you know, for me, it's not really about the content of what you're doing, because I think what you're doing is fantastic. And I'm kind of coming full circle the more um, that I'm listening. The why not for me is really about, you know, once something becomes an arm of government, there becomes an expense to it. And so, you know, the, you brought up the coalition, which I think is, a, is the perfect example, because the coalition initially did great, they still do great work, and they've always done great work, but at some point the town decided that they needed to rent them space downtown. So now it becomes they're on the public dole, and this becomes they're doing the same work they were before, but it's it's now a public expense. So that's where my mind is when I think about these types of things. Why I wouldn't necessarily want to expand government, but in this case, if this seems like something we had already. And, and just as an aside, if we took if we did an energy audit and paid for it, and we took no action, and I, I don't know that that's the case, but if that is the case, as you as you said, that's kind of shameful, you know, on the on the town's part. Um, if this is just a reboot, why do we need any action of the council to do it? So if the council never really rescinded the status of this group, does it still exist in some form and they can just pick up the mantle and run with it? That's an that's a interesting legal question, perhaps. Um, you know, it's been dormant for six years. And uh, I believe that uh, each council for a term uh, re-votes and uh, approves a given committee or whatever uh, for the term that they are sitting. And then that would come to an end at the end of their term and then would have to be renewed by the next council. That's my... Okay, but to that point, I the believe. council's never renewed the Public Celebrations Committee or any of the other committees. Well, Public we Celebrations have. is, is uh, in our ordinances, I believe. So, yeah, let me back up a step. So it's not a, I'm a it's specific committee, but I don't ever remember a motion ever to renew the existence of a commission. Well, because uh, in this case, it's a commission of the council. It's a committee of the council. It's a commission of the council. It's not memorialized anywhere else. So do we have any other council commissions? No, um, no, that's a committee of the council ordinance. Uh, Councilor Shortel just brought up. No, it, what the mayor is trying to distinguish is that there is some other legal creation of uh, things like, so planning and zoning exists as a matter of law. There's a statute that requires us to have right. that. It's also in the charter, same with the Zoning Board of Appeals, Inland Wetlands and Water Courses. All we do is appoint vacancies when they occur or reappoint um, those seats. But but because, and, and, and to your point, public celebrations, because there's an ordinance that creates a commission, the council doesn't have to act to recreate it with every term. Mr. Chair, oh, just just to again the structure, many towns their only relationship with especially electric utilities is they 
a, the utility acts in the town and they really have no relationship with the utility. So they create commissions to have that liaison with the electric company. In this town, we own the electric. So our structure is we have a public utility commission that oversees electric and water and sewer, obviously. But in that way, we are very different than most towns because if you have Eversource or Avangrid, uh, you, you don't have them sitting at a table necessarily telling you what their plans are, et cetera. So they, they create a committee, a commission, whatever, and that body then acts as li liaison from the, from the community to the, the electric provider. But our structure is very different. Do I still have the floor, Mr. Chairman? Yes, it's still yours. So I understand what you're saying, Mayor, but what the committee is describing is an, an advisory group to talk to different town departments about saving energy. And what you're talking about is a liaison between the public and the public utility, or the utility, who's a, a separate entity outside of the town. So I'm not sure that your example is relevant here. So I, I guess... It, it's oh. relevant in that... <laughs> The policies, directives, expenditures of money are controlled by the Public Utility Commission with regard to electricity. We have a very viable program right now with the very subject we're talking about, conservation load management funds. It's funded every year. So, you know, I, I don't want confusion coming out of this because the Public Utility Commission is the place to go to explain what is desired in the way of policies, directions, whatever. So for, for the commission to come to the council, I mean, we're going to spend a lot of extra time because that should come through the Public Utilities Commission. They are the ones who set the policies. Well, the Public Utilities Commission, with due respect, sets the policy with regard to the acquisition of power and the general direction of our town's electric utility. So to have a group that was just to advise them or any other group in town just to say, here's, you know, would you would you think about trying this? I don't understand the harm. I, was, did the administration have an adversarial relationship with this group in the past? I don't believe so. I was not uh, in attendance of any meetings. I would just want to make very clear it can only be advisory. Well, and the town council has no power to do anything but an advisory commission in this regard, correct? That's correct. I'm just trying but, to understand your, we, your opposition. Well, I'm concerned about it creates, from a public standpoint, where do I go to find out about utility? They shouldn't go to the commission. They should be going to the Public Utilities Commission because that is the body that can make a decision that will re reverberate. Once we create multiple places to go, and it's the growth of government, we end up with potential confusion about where do I go to have a question answered. If someone has a question about electricity in this town, they should begin with the Public Utilities Commission or even better, the staff at the Electric Division. Mr. Hendershot, his staff. That's where the conversation should begin for anyone who has a question about the Electric Division or water sewer. So again, structure has an effect and now where, where does a person go if they want an answer to a question? But it should be going to the Public Utilities Commission. But the irony of what you're talking about is if a customer had a question about what anything to do with power, who, they're going to call the Electric Division because most citizens have no idea that the Public Utility Commission even exists or, or what their function is. I mean, if you're, if you're into government and you understand the function of government, then maybe you know, but most people don't know where the, you know, they know that they flick the switch and the lights come on. They know that they pay a bill to the Electric Division every month. So I think this... It's a little bit of a smoke show to say that it's going to create confusion because government is already pl plenty confusing. I've seen the confusion in the past. Structure means something. If you want an answer, you know exactly where to go. It's not a question about this place or that place. Most people know there's an electric vision office. They pay their bills. They know there's an office there. Now there'll be another place. To do, do I go there? Do I go to the council? Do I go to the, the uh, Energy Commission? Do I go to the PUC? I mean, how many places do we go to try to find an answer? Well, who in, addition, in addition, basically all of the statistical work must be done by an, a consultant 
by people who are trained with the credentials. We have a million and a half dollars on an annual basis that is spent in that way, or approximately, on actual projects. If there should be additional projects to that, that can be suggested. But that's got to go to the electric division. Okay, so so they have a budget, they have staff that deals with this, and now we create another place to accomplish, I'm not sure what. That's my concern. And so government should be a clear illustration to the public where to go to get a direction. So let's back up a step, though, because this group isn't asking for money at this point, and they're not asking for a staff, which I would be vehemently opposed to. However, well, just they will need someone taking minutes because you, you, the minutes have to be posted. Uh, you have to post all the meeting dates. You've got to have the minutes on time within 48 hours. You know, all the FOI things. So that's something the council have to keep track of if, if all of that is happening. I'll, I'll just say that as a volunteer in the past, I did all that, all of that, th the things he mentioned, I did as a volunteer. And with all respect, Mayor, our town departments haven't been great about keeping minutes to begin with. I don't think you really want to start down that trail with me. I checked, and other than one department, for the most part, all of them had their minutes in the proper place, filed on time. The conversation here would lead everyone to believe that, oh, almost no one was filing their minutes. I respectfully, completely disagree with that opinion because I checked. I think the cart has left the horse at this point. Um, we do, and Councillor Zandri wants to make a comment. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, I just I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that, that came to mind as folks were bringing up questions. So, there, you know, the the mayor has discussed some points about their potential for some confusion. But this committee existed before for six years, and whatever amount of confusion was there or not is is based on memory and perception. I don't I don't think having an extra set of people talking about something is going to create confusion. If anything, it's going to create more communication. Um, people often come to us, we're counselors, and they ask us questions or things that, that maybe aren't even our direct charge. But we know to call the health department over something or, or call public works over something. We'll either direct them or do it for them. So I think there's that piece. Uh, Councilman Marone brought up a very good point about concerns about what it might cost down the road, but, but he also you know, reiterated the fact that right now they're not asking for anything. And sometimes that's not a bad thing. If I'm, and I, I'll stand subject to be corrected if I'm wrong about this, at one point in its history, Longford Center Inc. was completely um, voluntary. They did everything by volunteer. They had no budget whatsoever when they first got started. Over the years, they, they got money from the town and I, would, and I would like to suggest that given the wonderful celebrations that we have every single year for Celebrate Wallingford, that that was a well worthwhile investment. Just to, just to make a generic example of, of something that, they did, that that particular group delivered to the town um, by getting some funding, even though they started off as a volunteer setup. In this situation, this commission, if this commission comes together and even if it got down the road someday where they needed a little bit of money for something and they couldn't fundraise it on their own and they came to us and asked us for some low level amount of stipend but they contributed back two or three or four times that amount or way more or marginally more in savings and it's a wash it's still good for us to consider and and i don't and i don't to Councilor Tata's point about you know making sure that we've got representation from everybody, I, I don't know that every committee has that. I know many of them do. They have uh, minority representation and or mixed representation. Some don't. Some are just put together by a group of people. So I don't want to have that be what stops us tonight. None of that. Because even if, even if you were correct and this required that, we can add. They said they'd be fine with it. I bet they'd be fine with 100 people helping them if, if we could find them. So maybe the fact that Councilor Morganson kind of backed up the 
motion to just recreate the commission and maybe come back with the appointment. Maybe we could do that tonight. I'm kind of encouraging that of everybody because I know everybody's on the fence for different reasons. But maybe we could look at it from that, that point of view. Let's get it put back into place the way it was before and then figure out how to get people appointed. And if volunteers come forward, great. And otherwise we can, I don't know how much vetting we would actually do. I mean, I don't recall us vetting a lot of different people for, there's certain ones we do, but there's, I mean, for the celebrations committee as an example, unless we run into a, a ceiling problem, we don't normally bring them forward to talk to them. One of us, one off may call somebody, but you know, at that point, we're just good to go. But just some, I just wanted to kind of get some additional thoughts out on the table for everybody to think about. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we do have a motion on the table for the benefit of the council. If you could, Madam Clerk, read that back to us. Certainly. I think, Gina, your motion is to reform. To, I'm sorry, you're right. Reform. I have a headache tonight, and I apologize. Okay to reform the Energy Conservation Commission. Okay. Walling, Wallingford Energy Conservation Commission. To reform the Wallingford. We wouldn't want it to be North Haven. Right. The Wallingford Energy Conservation Commission. And well, that have, way I don't have to change the email. We have uh, Councillor Testa. You're not in the middle of I this. I believe. Yeah. Yes, I would. Okay. Yes, you You've reseconded. Councillor Laffin. Thank you. Sorry. What, what I don't want to repeat is the historic properties commission war that we had a couple of years ago, where we had like 37 hours of meetings about conflicting committees or commissions and who had jurisdiction and who had the authority and all this stuff. And that went on, it seemed like forever. And so I don't want to, I'm not like the shoot from the hip guy when it comes to like doing this kind of stuff. And just like I wasn't that night, we had the tax redu increase reduction thing. If we had just waited two weeks, we could have made it zero, but we all had to jump and make a quick decision and it was not zero. Same thing. I'm not saying we're not going to do it. I'm just saying, let's take a deep breath and, and do it right. Uh, you know, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't be saying, I don't know, like what's going to happen or what are we going to do? Um, we should know. That's what we're elected to do, or is to decide. Um, and the the they'd be happy to have more, or they'd be happy like it's not. This is I'm sure they would. They're all great people. I, I know a couple of you anyway, or I know a couple of who you are. Um, but it's not like what they want. We have to the the committee is bigger than them. Than the the commission is bigger than them. There, there should be some structure to that. And and even as I'm saying this, I'm trying to think back. Like I don't even remember the makeup of the historic properties commissions and the historic trust and how many people, and I don't know that they have minority re representation or, or if they should or they, or why they do or why they don't, whatever. But that's all the stuff that I want to figure out before we're just pulling our sidearm out and, and firing off. That's just, not, that's just not my style. So if they all push through the vote and I vote no, it's not that I don't think you should go ahead and do it or that it shouldn't be you seven or eight people. It's just, I never jump like this. And, and I've gotten flack for it before, and I'll take it again. But this is just another example of if we just took a deep breath and put our thoughts together, um, I'd rather do it right than just for the sake of throwing stuff against the wall. That's it. Councillor Shortell. I mean, the only councillor with a sidearm is Councillor Fishbein, and he's not here tonight. Um, yeah. Just a couple quick points based on some of the conversation. We did interview people for the Public Celebrations Committee. We interviewed seven people about two years ago uh, in a workshop, uh, and they sat right there. Um, the two examples that have come up as reasons to do this were organizations that aren't part of government, Coalition and Wallingford Center, Inc. So I'm not clear how those are supporting this, because those are examples of people that got together on their own set up 5013Cs, I guess, and yes, they now do get some town support, but I, maybe I'm missing something with those two examples. I think those are, they're great examples of how people can come together and make a difference, which I do agree with, but they did so without the council forming a commission. Um, 
and I agree with, I echo what Councillor, what Vice Chair Laffin said about the way we go about doing things. I don't want 100 people on your commission if we do it. I mean, I appreciate that you're saying that, but that's not going to be an end. That, there's nine of us up here. We can't get anything done. 100 people in your commission is not going to work for anyone. I don't, so, I mean, I think that we do need to set some guardrails around this and some rules around this. And I, I don't know. And I mean, Councillor Testa says, well, there's no good reason not to vote for this. I mean, I'm sorry, if Bob Parisi and Steve Knight, a bunch of Republicans, walked into a room on an item that I sponsored and we said, do this commission tonight, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't vote for it. So, with all due respect, let's take our time. Because if the vote is right now, my answer is no. But if we want to look at it some more, I'd be open. But right now, my answer is no. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, seeing no more hands on the council, comments from the public. Uh, Mr. Gross, you are quicker. By a hair. <laughs> Both of us are follically challenged also. So, um, Bob Gross, Long Hill Road. To the chair, to, you got the joke now. To the chair, to the mayor. Um, the money that's used every year through the electric division is whatever the million dollars is, whatever. But they don't necessarily have to use it for audits. They can use it for any type of project they want to use it for that, quote unquote, satisfies energy conservation yes no it, it 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 must typically it must include an audit because it's the only way to determine whether there's a benefit to the work being done uh, you you in order for it to be used it's got to show that there is a benefit there is a cost reduction you're using less energy so typically an audit is necessary and then the actual project uh, is it, there's there's funding for that too but uh, the program works well. Well, uh, then to your point that it has to show a reduction in use of electricity or whatever power you use, and then it doesn't necessarily have to be for home or industrial use. It could be for a solar array of panels because if you can show that there's a cost savings there, then the money can go towards that. I'm just using this as an example, so you don't have to use it always for, so you have somebody come in, uh, the Ben Martin audit team comes in, they come in, they audit, and they say, yes, there'll be a cost savings over a 20-year period of whatever percent with this array of solar panels. And that would be allowed by the energy, uh, by the electric division as long as it's something. What I'm saying is it's always the same thing. Either it's been light bulbs or these audits. There's other things that you can do with it, and I'm sure a commission of this nature, and with other people, I'm just saying, a commission, would be come up with these ideas that they could present to... Public Utilities Commission. That that can occur. I mean, as a general rule, from my understanding, the solar panels are heavily subsidized, uh, number one. And number two, uh, they ultimately do not show that reduce in cost because of the cost of them and our low, le low electric rates. So it's very difficult for someone to meet those parameters uh, because of the cost of the of the solar panels, right. but if 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 something works, it can work. Right. To Jason's uh, counselor Zandri's point, the he was making a comment that if the use went down, the uh, to a certain point, then you have a charge. The service fee would go up or something. It correlates back and forth. But the two biggest charges that Wallingford would f face coming with electricity coming the power is two things. One is capacity charge and one is fuel. Two. One and two. Well, fuel is one, capacity is two. Capacity is on the strongest, on the ISO New England or FERC, one time a year, it's usually in July, it's going to pick a date and they're going to say, what is, the, what is the use of that day? And that's what we have to pay for capacity charges. It's in the millions and millions of dollars. So, and then the fuel, fuel costs. The point is that what happens is, if you had solar, you would reduce your capacity charges. Those are fees you just don't have to pay back to ISO New England. And these are things that my, this kind of, kind of group could think of without being closed-minded about it. There's other things besides, there's solar is an alternative. There's, there's, and even if it's subsidized, even if we get subsidies, capacity, so Capacity charges are the charges that must be paid in order to provide funds 
for the future potential need for more generation based it's, on it's our not, it, it's 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 based on I, our usage on a particular day okay, that they I, set it for I don't think you're accurately describing what a capacity charge is our charges will be going up not because of capacity that's dropping it's going up because of transmission charges and that's all of the improvements made to the lines I mean but the, capacity, the system is a mess Connecticut has the highest electric costs in continental United States. Nobody, but that's not. But that's that's the, all the more reason you need to conserve and use less energy, and that's one of the reasons. And there's no question, Mayor. I agree with you. Um, ISO New England, the FERC, and so forth are talking to ISO New England because their cost structure is so high, and there's better ways of doing it. It, it is an extremely complicated, rather bizarre set of rules. ISO New England, the FERC overhead of that, the pronouncements by DEEP, the system is broken. No one will but that's, deal with it as a broken the system. Is. The point so is, is we're not going we're not gonna solve that with anything in Wallingford other than trying to keep our rates as low as possible. And that's why a commission would help. I just I just heard that there seems to be some even blowback against even a commission being formed. And so there is many ways that the uh, that they could be beneficial as they have been in the past. And it's not only electricity, it's water usage, it's gas usage, it's oil, the oil tanks. There's all other things that besides electrical use that this commission would take a look at. Thank you. Mr. Morgenstein. Good evening, Larry Morgenstein. I guess I'm somewhat at a loss in that my capacity to be surprised at what happens at these meetings. I didn't think I could be surprised anymore. I can't believe that we have a gift in front of us. A gift where you have a commission that saved the town money, that had nothing but good intentions, that existed from 2008 to 2014. It demonstrated savings. It showed that it could work within the system. It produced notes. It didn't cost the town anything but produce savings. And yet, what have we spent our time on? Finding ways in which to find a way not to do this. It's baffling. You have a gift. You have Mr. Deptula with his experience. He's openly asking and saying this is an asset. This is a trusted town employee who <laughs> has been working diligently for this town and he's saying it's an asset. You have a state representative who's willing to give her time as she did from 2008 to 2014. That's a gift. Her expertise in this area and her connections can't be questioned and yet we're debating this we have Pat Reynolds from the from the Board of Education who's made it his mission recently and gotten more in, in, invested in looking at energy and how we could save and he's willing to give his time and be part of this as a liaison. Again, another connection. If you looked at your backing material in the history of this commission, you'll see the name Joel Reinbold. And Joel Reinbold is now in the PUC. He also had a connection to this commission and worked with them at one time. The connections are there and the ability to work together is there. You have a town councilor Gina Morgenstein, who's willing to be a liaison. It doesn't preclude any other town councilor of, and I, I just can't believe I even have to say this, from the other side of the aisle to be part of it. This is amazing that this became partisan in some way. This is about energy, trying to save something for the town. I'm just dumbfounded. You have a gift here. 
you have people from the community here willing to give their time. And again, there's no guardrail against anybody else, just an interest in trying to help to join this group. What are you doing? Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the council, I'm Representative Mary Mashinsky, and I was in fact a member of this commission for quite a few years, and uh, we did save the Board of Education in particular several hundred thousand dollars per year, which we are very proud of that we were able to do that. And I don't know if they guys came in, so I don't know if they already mentioned our commission actually got an award from the state for um, energy savings. We were. I think we were second place after Milford. And uh, I'm thinking here what the best thing might be to do is to not vote tonight, but come up with a bipartisan group of people. And that way you will know it's a uh, nonpartisan commission and that everybody's interest is served. In, at the state legislature, we do have a bipartisan clean energy caucus and both parties participate in it and we come up with best ideas we can to save the state money, especially through energy efficiency, which is how our committee saved the most money for Wallingford. It was through energy efficiency measures, uh, which were substantial. So maybe what you could do is uh, is hold off on the vote tonight and come up with a set of folks from each party so that uh, you'll feel it's a nonpartisan or bipartisan commission. And then they can go to, go to work to um, do this task for the town. Uh, there are uh, more than half the towns in Connecticut have a commission like this and uh, Republican towns and Democratic towns and they uh, put their best ideas forward with sometimes talking with consultants or with other towns and by that way good ideas spread from town to town and uh, what North Haven or Milford comes up with could be replicated in Wallingford or we could send our ideas to another town so maybe what would make you most comfortable is to have a certain number of slots and then you could mix the Democratic appointments and the Republican appointments and uh, feel it would be bipartisan or nonpartisan as we do uh, with our Clean Energy Caucus at the legislature. So that's my suggestion for today. And uh, I certainly don't need another task force to be on. Uh, if I don't get picked, I understand. But um, these folks that are here before you, they are coming in uh, good faith to help the town save money through efficiency. And uh, we should let them or another panel do that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Bring it back to the council, Councilor Zandri. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just, I just wanted to make a, a couple quick, one comment and then maybe bring it, bring it back just to, for verification. So when Mr. Gross brought up capacity charges, I wasn't sure what they were. So I looked it up and it is pretty much the way he outlined it. Capacity charges are based on the highest amount of energy you are estimated to use or consume during a month or a year or at some given point. You pay a fee to ensure that, that you're going to reach that level. So that's what a capacity charge. Basically saying if you're going to potentially use up to some number of megawatts or gigawatts, you're charged a fee whether or not you get to that point or not. So his, his definition was pretty spot on. I wanted to make sure to, to make that point. What I wanted to make a comment now also too was to Representative Mishiski's point and, and to, and to Councilor Shortell's point because he felt he felt uncomfortable that it was being brought forward with people that were being nominated or, or suggested. The motion actually brought it all the way back. The motion right now is just to recreate this, this committee or commission. Just, I mean, and it wasn't even, there's no definition around it. it. It's almost like, do we agree we want to do this? 
And then at some future meeting, we'll bring it up and, and hammer out all the details. So really, the, in, in my opinion, and subject to me understanding it better or being corrected for it, the vote is just, yes, I want to do this. No, I don't think I want to do this. Or yes, I think this is a good idea. No, I don't think it's a good idea. If we were to vote yes, we would have to basically put this back on the agenda sometime to define whether we want 10 people to be appointed, nine people to be appointed, and then they can have a bunch of volunteers behind it. So, and, 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 and put up all those guardrails and, and the things that other people have mentioned, which are not necessarily bad ideas. Structure, verifying that we're gonna get minutes and so forth. The, the motion was, do we want to recreate the commission that we used to have, yes or no? After, if we get to the point of getting to the yes, we'll put it back on the agenda and have to hash out all those details. But if we vote no tonight, it's probably not gonna come back. It doesn't matter if we bring it back and say we're not gonna nominate anybody because we've already kind of voted no to that. So really that's the question. If we vote no tonight, are we gonna just put it back on the agenda to discuss it again for an hour and a half? It, it would be different if we were going to actually appoint people to it, but I mean, this is right, right now, this is just, yes, we wanna do it, no, we don't wanna do it. At least, unless I don't understand the motion that we heard. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilor Zandri, your understanding of the motion is the same as mine. Thank you. Councilor Levin. Yep, it's mine as well, and I don't mean to, uh, well, I'm dumbfounded. I don't know how this turned into a partisan thing um, with uh, Republican Council Marone arguing with Republican Mayor uh, Dickinson on it. Um, it, it and, and Representative Mashinsky, you weren't you weren't here before. There wasn't a concern about a bipartisan. It was discussed whether we needed to because of minority representation rules and stuff. Um, but it wasn't. No, we want you know nine Republicans to match your nine Democrats or anything like that. Um, my my issue and, and Councilor Shortel brought it up is it's not shooting from the hip, but is to you know would you be better served as a separate independent like the coalition or WCI was or whatever versus a gov another government entity. That's all, you know, that's where I'm trying to think we need to flush out. I, mean, I don't want to just throw my blessings into another government commissioner agency, uh, something that I didn't really even fully understand existed um, until we received the, the backup material. That's all it is. That's all it is for me. It has nothing to do with the people in this room. Um, if anything, as, as a Republican, if you want to make it partisan, um, it shouldn't be another form of government. I think you'll be more effective not having all of us in your way to talk about it for 90 minutes when you look at the success that the Coalition for a Better Wallingford has had um, and how WCI has grown, how, how much work SCOW has accomplished, all these other groups in town. So again, I'm not against forming a commission from the town, but at the same time, I'm not going to vote on it tonight. I'm not going to vote yes tonight. If we're going to do it another night, we're going to flush it out a little bit more in a little more detail. I want to understand the better benefit, the more of the benefit to having it be a government thing versus a separate entity. And in the government sense, that we're not being redundant with what we already have going on at the PUC. Sure, I'll motion to table. Second. There's a motion to table, uh, which stops all discussion until it's voted upon. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll on the motion to table? Yeah. Laffin. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Maroon. Yes. Morgenstein. No. Chertel. Motion to table. Yes. Tata. Yes. Testa. No. Zandri. No. Chairman Savoni. I vote yes. Motion, Motion to table. Motion table passes. Thank you for your time. Excuse me. Thank you for your time. Uh, it seems we will see you again. Thank you.
On to item 12, which is discussion and possible action regarding the town auditor agreement. Uh, Mr. Bowes, we are at the end of our current auditor's contract, am I correct? And that, is that, which firm is that? Please remind me. That is correct. Uh, it was a three-year agreement which comes to an end with the, um, which came to an end, I'm sorry, with the, um, the, 2009, the June 30, 2019 audit report, which everyone got. I believe we got everything out to everybody. Um, that was the last of a three-year deal. I also put in front of you tonight a correction. I'm sorry it got to you the night of the meeting. I was not here yesterday. Um, when uh, and I thank Mr. Schwartel for his inquiry because in my haste to get this to you folks uh, to make sure I started at least a discussion with you folks started a discussion as to maybe uh, and, to, and to obtain some feedback as to how you wanted to maybe approach this uh, I wanted to make sure I got onto tonight's agenda so uh, it is in the bid documentation that allows for the extension of a contract of, of a fourth year and a fifth year if uh, both parties agree not in the purchasing ordinance and Mr. Shortell actually uh, brought that up uh, yesterday but I was not here to address it yesterday so and please um, please remind for the record the the, um, the name of the firm is absent in both of your the memos. name of the firm right now that has con uh, that was uh, just conducted the audit for this three year term was uh, Bloom Shapiro they're out of okay. West Hartford and so by under the charter uh, the council is empowered under the town charter provisions. I think I mentioned it in the first memo of February 3rd um, uh, to select uh, the auditor. So uh, basically, you don't obviously need to make decisions tonight on this, but I, I just wanted to get that out there and, and, and make sure that everyone was aware of it, that the contract is over and uh, need and I that I need your feedback as to how you wish me to proceed. We've done it three different ways uh, in my tenure here. Um, we put it out to RFP, the council put it out, uh, allowed it. We actually waived the bid to use an RFP process. We did that once. Uh, we actually put it out to a, a hardcore bid, if you will, uh, once, and we also um, the council authorized me to negotiate pricing uh, and the bid was weighed by the council once. So we've had a myriad of uh, uh, solutions, if you will. So that's where I'm looking for feedback for you folks to see uh, how, how you would like me to assist in, in, in getting this going and getting it going early. It is a little bit early, but it's, you know, time flies and we'll be up on the budget soon. So I'd like to maybe get this, uh, some feedback from you folks just to see what you want me to do and how may I assist in the process. So, it, it, am I mistaken to think that if we do nothing, it goes to bid, or do you need advice from us? Uh, you would need to take action one way or the other. Uh, nobody administratively has the authority under the charter. This is a this is your this is your call. Okay. And have we ever done it as a straight bid? Yes, we have. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Marone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, from where I said, every town does audits, so there's got to be someone else in the marketplace. I think a straight bid is the only way to go. Um, I understand, you know, we probably have a relationship with this group, and they've, you know, you're happy with their work, but I think that it's the most fair to the public to just put it out to a straight bid. Uh, I don't disagree. Um, they are a good firm. They've really uh, helped us a lot. Um, but uh, there's probably uh, three or four firms that do t towns that are, the complexity of Wallingford. Um, I have no problem putting a back document together, sharing it with the council before it goes out to the street, so to speak, and then moving from there. We can certainly do that. Councilor Shortel. I would say let's sign them to a lifetime contract. I never want to talk about this again. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not one of the most. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. I'm with I'm with Council Marone. I'm I'm all for the bid process. Uh, you know, I think it's a it. Even if we end up back with them, and even if it caught, takes some time and money, it's a good exercise to go through. And I'm glad to hear that you're you know you you agree. Yep. So, Agreed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Tata. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I agree. I I think for something like this, we want it to go to bid, and and 
while I'm happy you have a good relationship with them, I don't know in an audit situation if that's really yeah, I, I that agree. important. So um, sure, it's an important thing. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, yeah, so I agree. Since you're just looking for our opinions on that, I would I would prefer to go to bid also. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? Questions or comments from the public? Um, oh, Mr. Gross, I'm sorry. You weren't quick enough this time. Well, Bob, because I was puzzled, because I'm I'm really puzzled, and the reason I'm puzzled is this is how long has Bloom Shapiro been the auditors of Wallingford? Oh gosh, um, that's a good question, Bob. I think it's about uh, thirteen. I'm going to say like thirteen years. But please don't hold me. Please I'm not give me no, some wiggle no, room on that. No, just to a point. Yeah. And when was the last time? I know you said there was an RFP. When was the last time there was an RFP? There was a uh, this three-year period, which was for the fiscal years ending 17, 18, and 19, was actually a waiver of the bid in a negotiation at their price. Uh, they actually reduced their price in my negotiations. I came back with the council, and they were pleased with that uh, and, and chose the three-year option. Prior to that, there was a, uh, I believe, a, a, a three-year bid. So that would be for the fiscal years ending 16, 15, and 14. And I'm doing this from memory, Bob. So again, if I'm off a year, I do beg your pardon in advance. Um, and prior to that, there was actually an RFP. The, the council waived the bid and allowed for uh, an RFP process, which puts a little bit more focus on the technical scoring, like maybe 60% technical scoring, 40% price. So when was the last time you really went out to the world and didn't use who was here? And had three, you built? Six, six years ago. Okay. Because it would have been th that, that three years and then the, the three years of this. Yeah, I don't even remember going out for an RFP because I know. It was, a, it was actually a bid. It wasn't even an RFP. It was, a, it was a bid. Yeah, it was, it was a two-part bid. Okay, because I have to agree with the counselors that have spoken already that this has always been the way it should be. You shouldn't have the same auditors looking at something every year. And I know that I've come up here and other people have come up here that this is, and it's always been the same auditor. I don't remember anybody but Bloom Shapiro up here. So it, and nothing against them. But I the point is you really should have somebody's eyes on those books besides the same people repetitiously they get nothing against you've been here a long time too it's just the commonality of everything it's just not a good thing i used to live in that world i i understand what you're saying thank you mayor and yeah, mr chairman uh, if we're bidding it then are you saying you don't want bloom shapiro because if you bid it that doesn't mean they couldn't bid we're not saying that okay so I just I just want to make sure that everyone understands, unless you exclude. I that. suspect if you pulled the council, they would clearly understand that it could be that Bloom Shapiro is the successful bidder. Okay, what would you plan? A two envelope system? It would be a, a straightforward bid. Um, there's yeah, what the mayor refers to as two two envelopes, if you will. The first envelope is the submission of the technical qualifications as as um, shown in the uh, the bid document. And the second part would not be opened until that scoring is made. They're sequestered in the purchasing office, locked away, if you will. And then once those technical scoring is arrived at, then they open up the price bids and then take that and they rank them again by a scoring the lowest price, getting 50 points, if you will, and then a pro rata share for all of the, the ones who are a little bit higher than that. And then those two scores are added together and your top rank company is consider your 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 winning better okay any other questions or comments from the council before we go back to mr gross are we voting no you have that okay no, are we voting <laughs> at some point there will be a motion and a vote yes not yet you haven't voted yet Vinny. <laughs> trying to follow what's happening thank you Bob gross, long, long, long. <laughs> we're Welcome, getting, we're getting there Vinny. we're getting there's, there there's not a there's a good reason to block out Bloom Shapiro. I mean, I don't know any of the firms it's doing, but um, it's sometimes commonality is not the best thing in the world unless you put in there that if they win, they have to change their audit team from their manager to the aud lead auditors that come in here. It has to be completely new people. Yeah. That's Actually, that's a, that's a very good point. Uh, if you don't mind me agreeing with you once in a while. 
Um, that, that's a good point. And actually, as they do that every three years, uh, and it's part of their um, uh, operational this. aspects of that firm. So we've we've had three different, uh, I'll call them junior partners, uh, for lack of a better phrase, in my term here, um, maybe maybe even a fourth. And the intern, uh, I'm sorry, and the in charge as well has been a rotational thing because uh, of that fact that you just mentioned, uh, just to get maybe another set of eyes within their firm on it. So if you decide to do that, I, if you allow Bloom Shapiro to bid, hopefully you'll add some stipulation on who can do their audits. Thanks. I think they, they take care of that internally within their firm, but yeah, it's a, it's a good point. Can we preclude them from bidding? I'm sorry? Can we preclude them from bidding? You, we can ask them. Uh, we would prefer to right now uh, take a look at a different firm, if you like. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just, I mean, is, can, can you write a public bid that says, oh, by the way, you shall not apply? Um, that's a good question. I, I don't know legally. I can't, I can't really go there legally. I, something's telling me no, but uh, let's put it this way. Uh, public accounting firms uh, get their business because someone else loses that client. And that's, you know, that's part of the, part of the process. Uh, if the council felt strongly that they did not wish uh, to have Bloom as the auditors, again, uh, I can speak to that partner and, and, and explain that. I, I don't think and then report back and then we I don't know that that's what you're going to get in tonight's motion mayor you seem to want to speak well I, I was just going to suggest I mean if you really don't want them then they should be told rather than waste the time on a bid but if if a bid came in and they were the low then obviously you could say well you've been the bidder and we, we don't feel comfortable without with repeating and you take other than low bidder but if we really didn't want to have them back, we should tell them because it wasted their time. Councilor Shortell. No, no, I don't know anyone is saying we don't want them. I think it's this is a philosophical process discussion. This has I've nothing got, to do with the people involved. Yeah, I've got they, a clear. We, we, could, we could have them for the next 30 years, but I would as long as we went out to bid yeah. periodically and through the open bidding process, they came back to us as the best fit for the town through that process. But I don't think anyone is saying we don't want them. I don't want to be publicly, I don't think we should, I have no criticism of the job they do at all. Okay. Yeah, but that's, that, that's I fine. just get nervous when we have the same one for 13 years. That's the issue. Yeah, let, me, let me just yeah. clarify. The reason I brought it up, and for people who may be watching the program, the system, <laughs> the system could end up with the same firm. So right. Everyone's so oh, sure, right, understood. And if, okay. as I, it's fine. Like I said, if they, if they come through the process, you know, so that's great. They've earned it. I just don't think we should have some of these relationships with vendors in perpetuity. That's all without going through that. That's, that's my only point. Understood. No criticism of them. Understood. Okay. Can I have a motion to uh, send the town auditor agreement out to bid? So moved. moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion on the council? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. The motion carries. There is no business, but uh, no business for item 13. There being no further business on the agenda, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I make that motion to second. adjourn. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, I declare this meeting adjourned. <laughs>